Greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. Let's, uh, one, I just want to say happy holidays and hopefully you guys have a wonderful, safe, safe holiday with everybody at Christmas, happy Hanukkah and all that good stuff. Speaking of holidays, what happens when you have that one uncle, everybody got that one uncle that gets intoxicated from the holidays, drinks, maybe he might slip or fall. I'm not saying that could happen, but it's possible. So let's talk about what happens when someone falls and they accidentally hit their head, okay? I want to talk about neuros. Let's talk about intracranial pressure and what's the assessments, the diagnostics, and the treatments that are basically the protocol of what many hospitals usually do. So let's just say you're at the hospital and before they came in, um, they hit their head. Now if someone's on the floor and as an assessment, what are you gonna do as a nurse? So this is what I always learned from my school and the very first thing we're gonna do is check the level of consciousness. Now they could be uh, you know, um, declining or they could respond little by little by saying small words here and there. You know that's a red flag. Second thing you look for is PERLA, which is pupils equal round reactive light accommodation. Usually the normal size is two to seven. It could be higher than that, which is called doll's eyes. And that's because of the, blood, the pressure on the brain um, is pushing it. And remember, the skull can't expand. So the, blood, or the, the pressure that's in there from inflammation, maybe uh, um, internal bleeding or anything like that, it's putting pressure on the brain. And what do you have on the brain? You have the brain stem and the pituitary gland. So if you put pressure on your brain stem, that controls your vital signs, respiratory, heart rate, and blood pressure. So you want to make sure there's no pressure. But if there is, that's when you want to continue with the further assessment. And the other one would be um, uh, Christian's triad. Triad, triangle, I remembered it by uh, wide blood pressure, and down here was the regular breathing, and over here was the bradycardia. Bam. So Christian's triad. And you're going to know that for school if you're a nursing student or anything like that. So normal blood pressure is 120 over 80 and the wide systolic and diastolic could be 180 over 40. So that's really wide. And then another one is irregular breathing. It could lead to chine stokes, which is breathing, 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 and then you stop and you breathe again. And then you can go also into a taxic state, which is um, no breathing. And so um, another one you want to look for also is um, uh, bradycardia. Heart rate normally is 60 to 100, and it could be below that 50 or 40. So you know we have a red flag. Another thing we also look for is that the patient complains of a headache or mood changes or projectile vomiting. You probably haven't seen that, but that's like exorcism, just bam. You ever see that movie where the, the, the kid in the movie throws up like straight forward? That's projectile vomiting. Um, so that's another important factor that could happen with someone as ICP. And, and, and a lot of people don't know this, if they pee themselves. Now, when someone pee themselves, they bang their head up pretty bad, and what hormone is that? Antidiuretic hormone is released, and it's not from your uh, brainstem, it's from your pituitary gland, and that is a hormone. So now, if you release too much, they're gonna hold urine, and if they release, not enough. So if you get hit in the head, sometimes as a nurse, you know, uh, we have to evaluate this, that if they're peeing, it could be from brain injury, because if you don't have enough antidiuretic hormone, then, um, um, you're going to be releasing so much fluid so they might pee themselves. So that's a red flag and that's another thing we got to look forward to. Um, so another thing we're going to do besides um, assessing the patient, they're already, let's just say the patient's in the hospital. Um, the diagnostics they usually do is like a CT scan of the brain, they'll do an MRI um, and all these other diagnostics. So the doctor did all that and then another protocol that the doctor will follow for treatments is what I remember is SLAM. Now, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just telling you guys and educate my fellow YouTube nurses out here what they usually do. And so after the diagnostics and they diagnose the patient, um, what you're gonna have to do as an ICU nurse is you have one patient, you can't have four or six, there's not enough. You have to watch them and monitor them 24 seven. And so you're in there, you have to have um, the head of bed elevated. The reason why you have it up elevated is to decrease the pressure on the brain and also um, you have to keep the head straight. You can't have them curved to the side like this. You're gonna put in kink and, and put pressure on the jugular vein and the arterial right here. You gotta make sure it's clear and painted. So you can't have them on the side. They're usually like this. You gotta decrease the stimuli, no talking out loud. You can't have them sitting there with music playing, which usually they don't. But you can't have them in a loud room and you gotta have the lights really dim and low. And so that's very important. So the protocol for treatments is different, but I remember it is SLAM. Bam, you hear that? SLAM! And that's the way I remembered it was S-L-A-M. So the treatment for S would be um, steroids. And what do steroids do? Besides make you buff, I'm not talking about like the buff and strong kind of stuff, but SLAM, I mean the steroids would be used for decreasing inflammation. Good job, you guys answered it. So you're decreasing inflammation, and that's what you need because you're putting so much pressure on the brainstem and on the pituitary gland and all the other things in here. You want to make sure you decrease it. So basically steroids is one that they use. 
L is Lasix, which is a diuretic. You're gonna really, um, basically pee out all the, um, your, in your uh, vascular compartment, you have a lot, a lot of um, um, vascular, I mean, uh, a lot of fluids. So you wanna make sure you, you take Lasix. And what happens when you take Lasix? You're gonna um, decrease your potassium, so you gotta fill up that potassium. And what's a normal uh, potassium level? That's therapeutic, 5.2 to 3.4. So you wanna make sure you give them potassium. But that's another video. Let's go and keep uh, talking about the protocol. So they're going to give them um, respiratory alkalosis. Alkalosis, a lot of you guys may not know this, but respiratory alkalosis, what it is, is uh, someone who's hyperventilating. And what it does, it causes a fall in your partial pressure. And uh, I'm trying to remember the last part. And so uh, it's a fall in the plasma. So basically, your blood volume in your vascularity compartment decreases. So if it drops, your blood pressure drops, then your blood vessels constrict and shunts it just to its vital organs. Now, if it constricts and gets smaller, what does that mean? More room and less pressure up here in the brain. So that's definitely another key thing that they use. The last one for M from SLAM um, is mannitol, in which that is is an osmosis diuretic um, medication, and it pulls the, 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 the liquids up here. So you, it's another diuretic. So like I said, um, you, that's another protocol that they use, and um, so yeah, so that's the, the assessments you're gonna use. And I forgot to throw in the Glasgow scale, which they use, it's, it's, it's a rating point that they use for an assessment, which is like the change of condition and, and how they're doing with orient to person, place, and time. Then that's a, a, a scale of the, the vision, per of, you know, pupils equal round reactive light accommodation. So they use all that, it's a glaucoma, uh, Glasgow coma scale. And that's a different video, but that's kind of part of the assessment. So like I said, guys, um, that's all the neuro part. It's, in, it's, it's pretty, it's, uh, there's a lot of information, but I just wanted to do a video on that because it's the holidays. I figured I'd educate you guys. Yeah, I said it, educate you guys. And I wanna make sure you guys are on point. And like, another thing, guys, before I go any further, what I wanna talk about is the information that I give you guys is just what I've learned from school. I don't want you guys thinking, oh, he's a doctor, oh, he's this and that. I'm just trying to share these videos and information for you guys. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions, continue giving me good questions. And thank you again for subscribing, checking out my videos. And uh, hopefully you guys like the little Christmas background. I want to just share the happy holidays with everybody out there. And you guys have a wonderful, beautiful Christmas holiday. Thank you, my fellow subscribers. Peace.